Good morning and welcome everyone. I'm Nicole Dozier. I am from the North Carolina Justice Center, but here bringing you greetings on behalf of the People's Budget Coalition. We appreciate your presence here today during this memorial vigil. Here, we're here to honor the lives of too many North Carolinians we've lost to the coverage gap and also to those who still suffer um, unnecessarily. We're honored to be joined today by Barbara and Courtney and also Dr. Luderman, providing to us the patient and provider perspective, sharing the impact of being stuck in the coverage gap, but also the opportunity that we have and that our state policymakers have to close it now. Speaking of policymakers, I do want to say that we did hear from some who are wishing us well today. And thinking about today, I thought of a quote from poet Richard Armour, who said, politics for years, or all too long, has been concerned with the right or the left instead of the right or wrong. Today we are saying, as we have said since 2014, closing the Medicaid coverage gap cannot wait. Today we are saying, as we've said, as long as we've had voices, health care can't wait. Closing the coverage gap is not about right or left. It is about right or wrong. Health care is not about right or left. It is about right or wrong. Yes. And now is the time for us, for us all to get on the same right side of this issue and on the right side of history. I'm encouraged today that lawmakers in both chambers and in both parties have all expressed the importance of closing the coverage gap. Almost everyone now recognizes that this is a critical issue and this is a simple matter of justice. But I would also remind everyone of the old legal concept that justice delayed is justice denied. Every day that we wait, every day that we study, every day that we talk and analyze, dither and debate is another cancer diagnosis that could have been caught. It's another addiction that could have been caught. It's another bill that puts a family deeper in debt. For too many, justice delayed is justice denied. Please, no more delay. It is heartwarming though, to be here with all of you, gathered here side by side, to honor and remember the lives of North Carolinians who have died waiting for our policymakers to do the right thing. It's past time to expand Medicaid. Next up is Marsha Bailey, blessing us with a song, Marsha. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see, was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace, my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed. Amazing grace, how 
sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I see was blind, but now I Thank you. And now please join me in a moment of silence, remembering all of those that we have lost in the healthcare coverage gap and all those who are still suffering to get the care that they need. Thank you. Please join me now in a moment of prayer and reflection. Spirit of life and love and justice, we come together this morning to honor all those, our beloved community members, our family, our friends, who we have lost in the healthcare coverage gap. And we bear witness to the suffering that is still happening for all those across the state who cannot get the care that they need and that they deserve. We are here today to live into our shared value that all people, all people have inherent worth and dignity. And yet we are heartbroken and we are angry that our elected officials fail to do the same. We are tired of their inaction and when we know all too well the precious lives that are at stake, we know all too well the moral urgency of this moment. And so in this beloved community, may we feel our collective grief and our outrage, but may we also come together today to renew our faith not in some divine intervention, but in us. Spirit of life and love, help us to feel deep in our bones the abundance of this movement in our state for healthcare. Help us to believe in the transformative power of our love and help us to harness that power to usher in a new day for our state where healthcare is honored as a human right and all people are able to thrive. May it be so. Amen. My name is Reverend Lisa Garcia Sampson. I proudly serve as the executive director of our Unitarian Universalist Justice Ministry in North Carolina, and we are a proud partner organization with the People's Budget North Carolina Coalition. The People's Budget was formed in the early days of 2021. We saw that in the midst of a pandemic with millions of North Carolinian, North Carolinians suffering, our state had billions of dollars available. And yet, instead of investing it in the people of our state, our elected officials continued to stash away that money in the name of fiscal responsibility. We knew that this was morally unacceptable, and we also knew that following 2020, through our election work, through the work of simply trying to survive and be together and be with each other as community in this pandemic, our relationships deepened. Our 
connections, our trust in one another deepened across coalitions, across partners, across regions of our state, generations and identities. We began to feel the abundance of this movement. We knew that people across the state were united in the desire for health care, and not just health care, but for housing, for fair wages, for workers' rights. We were united in the belief that our schools were desperately underfunded and that our children and youth deserved so, so, so much more. The majority of North Carolinians want these things. And so we created a coalition specifically devoted to our state budget that works to, add, to activate the broad base of North Carolinians who share these beliefs to pass a budget that is made for the people and by the people. We believe that a budget is a moral document, a reflection of our values. And so we strive to be bold in imagining a North Carolina where our state's budget, which is of course our money, actually invests in the people of our state and creates the conditions in which we can all thrive. Today, we live into one of our core values as a coalition by centering the stories and the experiences of those who are most directly impacted by the health care coverage gap. And so on behalf of the People's Budget Coalition, I want to thank you all for joining us. I want to invite you into this work. And now I will turn it back over to Nicole. Thank you, Reverend Lisa. Um, next, I'd like to introduce to you Barbara Gaskins. She will share, share her personal story with us today. Barbara? Good morning, everyone. I myself am someone who falls within this coverage gap. When employed, I am for, I'm forced to pay for health care coverage myself. But when the employment ends, I have to apply for Medicaid to keep my children covered, and often I go without. You see, our current health care allows so many people to fall between the cracks, and I'm here today to mourn my brother, who is also someone who fell through. I'm not sure how many of us understand the correlation between criminal justice and health care, but my brother got out of incarceration um, in April this year. Um, we attempted to obtain resources for him. We were able to get a birth certificate, but unable to get a social security card because we didn't have an ID. We couldn't get an ID because he didn't have a social security card. Well, with him, while he was incarcerated, he had gotten into an accident and he was afforded opiates um, until he got out. Once he got out, he was addicted. Couldn't get health care, couldn't get coverage. So he did what most people do, which was turn to the streets. So he went back to using drugs. He got addicted to heroin. And on May 14th, I'm the one that found my brother across the hall from me because he had gotten into fentanyl and it was too late to save him. So we are begging our legislators, please, please, please take heed. While you see criminals, we see family. You know, we can't continue to lose people. You know, I don't know how many Christians we have, but when you think of the prodigal son, you know, the prodigal son dealt with or you know committed crimes you know dealt with all types of issues but when he came home he was welcome he was welcome with resources you know he was welcome he was draped and so many people are not and so many people are falling along these cracks we we see the visual you know we see those who have lost their lives when 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 are our legislators going to take heed? You know, we need leaders who are going to be leaders. You know, it's time to put the partisan aside. We need assistance. We need North Carolina to stand up. We need health care. Thank you.
Thank you so much for sharing that, Barbara. She said when. Well, I would say now. Um, next up, we're going to have Courtney Crudup come and share her all. So very personal story. Thank you so much, Courtney. Hi, everyone. My name is Courtney. I am an entrepreneur, and I own a nonprofit um, where I'm from in the city of Oxford, North Carolina. I'm also here representing Down Home, North Carolina today. Um, my story is a bit different. Like I said, I'm an entrepreneur. My, uh, my profession is cosmetology. Um, for seven years, I had to work in the field without health care. Me nor my kids had health care. I was hurting because I stood up all day. I couldn't go to the doctors. I had to pay out of pocket. My kids couldn't go to the dentist. And we all know how important it is for children to, to have dentistry. Um, it was it was sad. It was it was it was sickening. I would be so sick sometimes and I would cry myself to sleep at night because I knew that I couldn't afford it. And when I tried to go to social services to get help, they wanted me to write down every single client, how much they paid, what times, I had to give them my full schedule. And it just got tiring, just trying to manage my regular schedule and all of that. So it was just, I just was like, forget it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna, you know, pay out of pocket and see how that works for me. So fast forwarding to now, that was seven years ago. I ended up getting pregnant and having a baby. And that qualified me to get Medicaid because I had a baby. So me and my children, we were able to get Medicaid. Two years ago when the pandemic hit, of course we all know that they took the cosmetology jobs first. So that qualified me to get Medicaid and my children because I was under the income. I was low income. I didn't want to be like this. I love working. I love my job. I don't want to, I'm, I'm just, I want to go back to work now. But I'm in fear that if I go back to work that we won't have health insurance. So I don't know what to do, guys. I'm, I'm really just standing here today begging and pleading the legislators, the elected officials to just hear us out, hear our stories, hear regular people like me and people that want to work, people that are trying to do something with themselves and, and just have an open ear and an open heart to make the changes that we need in North Carolina. I don't, I don't know what else to say y'all, but thank y'all for your time. Thank you, Courtney. I agree. It shouldn't be so exhausting to own a small business and try to get access to health care. So thank you for both of the speakers. Next up, we have Dr. Joel Luderman. Dr. Joel is from Advanced Community Health Center, and he will share with us the provider perspective related to the stories that you've already heard and trying to make sure that people have access to care in this area. Dr. Luderman? Good morning, everybody. My name is Joel Luderman. I am the Executive Medical Director at Advanced Community Health. Advanced Community Health is one of the safety net providers uh, in North Carolina, in Raleigh. We are Raleigh's largest federally qualified health center. Largest federally qualified, no, that's better. Federally qualified health center. Uh, we provide services for uh, over 20,000 unique lives. Uh, we are one of 42 such health centers in North Carolina, and as a nation, uh, we provide over 10 to 15 percent of all the health care uh, for the country. So federally qualified health centers, our safety net niche is a very important one. Every day, as a pediatrician, as medical director at Advance, I see and we see the effects of not expanding Medicaid. Expanding Medicaid is time. This time is now. This time is overdue. When we didn't expand Medicaid several years ago, we lost an opportunity to not only have federal funds that help families, that help patients, that help ordinary North Carolinians who 
may be working and may have an income, but may earn too much money to, uh, to qualify for Medicaid, and yet not enough money to get regular health care. That coverage gap takes its toll every day on our patients and on our families. We see this as providers every day. We know that despite the fact that we can provide health care to anyone that walks in the door, we also know that health care, acute health care, only determines about 20% of a person's overall health. Over 80% of a person's overall health is made up by other factors, what we're now calling social determinants of health, social drivers of health, things like housing instability, food insecurity, transportation problems. And although Advanced Community Health doesn't provide those specific services, by getting patients in the door, by having patients with health insurance, those other services that make up 80% of a person's health can be taken care of. Every day, our social service uh, workers, our support services, our care managers help to get our patients plugged into the various services as our acute medical providers are dealing with acute medical problems. But patients that lack health insurance delay care. Even though we and other providers will see patients when they walk in the door, if patients and families, our neighbors, our families, people that you're hearing from today, if they delay care, acute problems become bigger acute problems. Chronic problems become harder to treat. All of those things take a toll. All of those things also impact our social, social uh, and medical partners in the hospitals, in the acute care centers, because people then start seeking care wherever they can when it's often too late for simple solutions and now patients and families have more complicated, more expensive, and often less successful treatments. It is time to expand Medicaid. North Carolina is one of only 14 states to not have uh, expanded Medicaid in the country. Every day, families are suffering. Every day, people are dying. The longer people delay care, their acute medical problems become bigger, their 80% social determinants of health problems become bigger. It is time to expand Medicaid. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you, Dr. Luderman. I'd like to say that again. It is time, it's past time to expand Medicaid. So I'm gonna bring up Rebecca Cerise. Rebecca is at the NC Justice Center. She's our policy advocate. And she's also here to bring up, bring closing remarks um, and some reflection for us. I'm going to call to action as a member of the People's Budget Coalition. I bring up Rebecca Cerise. Thank you so much. First, I want to thank our speakers. They were absolutely spectacular and courageous to share their personal stories. Uh, thank you so much for coming and, and doing that. Um, I have to say, although there has been some movement um, on Medicaid expansion this session, I am angered and saddened and <laughs> frustrated that we have to be out here again today doing another vigil and begging the lawmakers to do the right thing and expand Medicaid. 38 other states have expanded Medicaid. The federal government picks up 90% of the tab. And now there's an incentive of about $2 billion over two years that the federal government will give any state that expands Medicaid. That will cover 600,000 additional North Carolinians. It will strengthen rural hospitals, and it will give people the opportunity to get the care that they need. Healthcare can't wait. When it does wait, as you heard, people die. With my job, I've been able to go around and talk and find talk to families who have lost people to the coverage gap, and some of them are here today, um, that you see, that we're honoring. And they have a lot of courage in telling their stories, and so I want to honor them by just introducing you to some of them. This is Jeff Moore, beloved son, brother, and uncle. He was working part-time as a cook, and he had a lot of, he had bad pain in his abdomen, but because he was in the health coverage gap, he could not go to get it checked out by the doctor. 
finally he ended up in the emergency room because the pain was so bad that, and he was diagnosed with end stage kidney cancer. He passed away soon after. His family really, really misses him. If he had had health insurance, he would have been able to get the, the preventative screenings he needed or go to the doctor early on and improved his chances for survival. I want to talk to you about to Amanda and her mom, Tony. Amanda proudly served our country for six years in the Army, and her mom um, was diagnosed with cancer, lost her job, and lost her insurance. Amanda had to take out, go into debt, take out a credit card and go into debt to help her mother pay for her medical care. And, but still, even with that financial assistance, her mother could, was rationing medication, didn't go to the doctor as much as she could. A couple of weeks, or should have, a couple of weeks ago, I got a text message from Amanda telling me her mom had lost her battle with cancer. And of course, she was devastated. These are real people's lives. Healthcare can't wait. We need to expand Medicaid now. I want to tell you about Deanna. I met Deanna in 2019 at the Governor Roundtable in, um, thank you. Thanks, Deanna. This one really hurt. I met Deanna in 2019 at the Governor Roundtable. There was not a dry eye in the house when she talked about when she lost when her baby was born stillborn, she lost her Medicaid coverage two months later. Grief stricken, it took her a while to get a job that had insurance. When she did, she had stage four cervical cancer. Her doctor called me up in tears to tell me about this and said, no woman in the richest country in the world should ever have stage four cervical cancer. It is a treatable and preventable disease if you get the proper screenings and yet she couldn't because she did not have Medicaid these are real people and real lives we have to expand Medicaid now uh, Jessica one more Jessica thank you uh, I have become very very good friends with um, Jessica's mom Robin she has been here time and time again at the North Carolina General Assembly begging our legislators, urging them to do the right thing. She couldn't be here today because she couldn't get off of work. And also her husband is dying. But she was still wanting to come. But why should she be forced to relive her trauma and her grief to beg these folks in that building to do the right thing? Where are they? We're here. They should be here passing Medicaid now. Yes. Yes. Healthcare can not wait. These are real people's lives. Last one. It's not just about people who are dying in the coverage gap. It's also about people who are suffering. Diane from Rockingham County, truck driver, loved what she did, was diagnosed with diabetes and could no longer drive her truck. She lost her health insurance, of course, and then was unable to manage her diabetes because she couldn't afford insulin. She had medical emergency after medical emergency, mini strokes. She had three heart attacks, neuropathy. She could no longer work. It took forever for her to get disability, and in the meantime, she was still in the coverage gap. So we took someone who was a healthy person and could have stayed healthy, managing her condition, and instead she ended up with medical emergency after medical emergency. These are just of the few of the people who I've met along the way. Beloved family members, daughters, sons, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, who we have lost or who are suffering in the coverage gap. Every moment the North Carolina General, General Assembly uh, delays expanding Medicaid can lead to tragic results. There is broad agreement now that Medicaid expansion is a win-win-win for North Carolina and yet still no action. Why aren't our legislators in town, again, doing this right now and helping families like the ones that we've heard from today and the ones that I just told you about? So the NC Senate and the NC House must take immediate action and expand Medicaid finally and allow folks to get the coverage that they need. You can all help 
and everyone here, call your legislators. We have a, a little sheet and a sample script. And also, come November, vote, be a healthcare voter. I want to end with a quote. This is an opportunity to take federal dollars, actually present a savings for the state of North Carolina, and increase access to health care. I call that a pretty good trifecta. That was Speaker Tim Moore. I agree with him. Let's get it done. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Rebecca. Um, there's nothing like actually sitting down and talking to people and getting their real stories and then having to share them over and over, like Rebecca said, is troubling. So today, we're telling the stories, and we want to get this done. Um, I want to let reporters know that um, Rabbi Salam is going to wrap us up and to allow some time for questions. Rabbi Salam? Hi, I'm Rabbi Salem Pierce. I'm a member of Carolina Jews for Justice, which is um, one of the partners of the People's uh, Budget NC. Um, in Jewish tradition, there is um, a custom called um, Kaddish Yatom, Mourner's Kaddish, that we say um, after the death um, of, of a beloved. And there are many rules around it. One of the key ones is that you have to have 10 people in um, in your presence when you say it. Um, one of those reasons is that we need each other um, in death. And Judaism understands the obligations that we have to one another in death. How much more so than do we have obligations to one another in life? That's what I learn from my tradition. The obligations we have to one another in life so that no one dies needlessly because of lack of coverage. No one puts off getting health care, getting treated, getting checked out because of lack of coverage. There's absolutely no reason for that. So instead of, I'm not going to say the Mourner's Scottish um, in the uh, Aramaic, <laughs> um, but I will share um, a modern um, uh, interpretive Mourner's Scottish. This is a prayer for, uh, for the bereaved by Deborah Cash. Build me up of memory, loving and angry, tender and honest. Let my loss build me a heart of wisdom, compassion for the world's many losses. Each hour is mortal, and each hour is eternal, and each hour is our testament. May I create worthy memories all the days of my life. And may all of these here May their memories be for a blessing. Thank you. All right. This completes our memorial vigil. Thank you.